So we we have Gordon just for a couple of minutes, and Brian, you did not write the short. No. You did not help produce the short. You were not in the short. Right. So I ask you, as someone who has a fresh set of eyes, because the rest of us are were too involved in it, why don't you ask some questions so the people who are watching might know what we're talking about from a perspective of someone who doesn't. Right. So... Here's a few questions. The uh, the short that you wrote, how long did it take to write the script for that? And was it a script? Do you write in script form or do you write in stories and then go, hey, let's make this a script? So it was a short story that I wrote a couple of years ago. Uh, I, I have no idea how long it took me to write it. I don't track it. But um, so I'd never written a script before. Matt contacted me and said, I think this uh, short story you did a couple of years ago, it was called True Believers, the original story. Um, I make a good script and I'm on for, I'm up for anything. So I just said, sure, that's fine. I went online, spent a couple hours reading about scripts, got some software and started to start it. I mean, it was understood from the very beginning that there was no possible way I'd be able to write an actual script that could work, but at least I could get it in Matt's hands in somewhat the right form. Then we went back and forth. I mean, we ended up with like version seven point something. So the, the script, the script, once, the script made a lot of changes. I don't know. We spent I spent hours on it, but um, it was it was a learning experience for me, and I loved it. And I will just say this: as a writer of fiction, um, I actually may write some in screenplay format because when you do the action blocks, it really lets you kind of summarize action, and then you can come back later and clean it up, and you know, in, in a way that you would be right for prose. So right. anyway, yeah, I loved it. It was a great experience. Huh. Yeah, Gordon. Gordon was fun to work with he was very open to because a lot of times people are kind of weird about you know making changes and so we changed quite a bit and yet i'm pretty yeah. sure we kept the heart and soul of the the point of the story intact and that's that's the you just kind of have to accommodate what you can and can't pull off have you ever done any screenplay work no so i was just curious i mean gordon i think i i told you this will will spent a big chunk of his life in the industry but mainly editing what had already been shot. Is that fair? Right. Yeah, he's an editor. So, what else you got, wow. buddy? Um, <laughs> now remember, you're uh-huh. you're representing people who know nothing. Right. And so, right. Hit us. Um, I feel like an elected official. May um, I ask yeah. a question then? Sure. Essentially, that your story is autobiographical. Is that correct, or is that total fiction? In your journey to New Orleans. It it it's. It's Partly. completely autobiographical, but complete fiction in terms of any of the action happened. I never went to New Orleans. I don't have a folder in which I contain my worldview. I don't know anyone that does. And the reality of this little um, short film, people, it, whatever your worldview is, you have a folder and it's all written out in there and you kind of mess with it and carry it around with you. So, but yes, it's no unquestionably that it's about my own inner journey. Yeah. So, in essence, there is not a quote-unquote market for manuscripts, or is right? Is that no. a, that is that just a device? completely made up? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In the, in the in the film, there's this kind of a black market for people who have created complex worldviews, maybe combined odd ones. Like in this case, it was an agnostic and a Baptist preacher and one person, and uh, those odd worldviews are. Make, make these beautiful folders and people actually will buy them after the person is dead because they're just interesting. So, yeah, absolute fiction, but... Very interesting, nonetheless. Huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting how often the things that people do that when they work on their first projects, they tend to be autobiographical. I mean, because you're, you're speaking from something that you, sure. can, you can literally have firsthand input for. It's not total fiction. Yeah. So it, it was, like I said, I, I've been following... Uh, Gordon's writings for a while, and uh, you had a blog for a long time called Real Life Preacher. You, you published yep. a, one or two different books out of that, out of that work. Yeah, uh, yeah two different books. Yeah, I, I, I started a blog in two thousand and two. I was a minister, and I, I, I was anonymous, and I, I just tried to tell the truth about the way I saw life, which doesn't always work for ministers. So, yeah, that, Seriously? Yeah, that blog, that's, a, that's, a, that's a deeply ironic thing to say, but a true thing to say. So, yeah, say. yeah, yeah. That's kind of how I got started writing. I still have a blog. It's just blogs are kind of dead now, so I, you know, I don't really do much with it. Hmm. Blogs are dead? 
As they were a dominant social media forum in 2002, three, four, five, and six, and seven, once Facebook um, kind of ascended, that's where all the conversations take uh, place. So blogs okay. are still there. Also, instead of a, a select number of blogs, now there's what, like a billion of them. So it's sort right. of a double whammy. Too many of them, and nobody really wants to converse. Or so. Well, that is an issue. Hey, no one wants to sit Gordon. long enough to watch anything or read anything over 14 seconds. I'm even yeah. guilty of that so myself. Our hey, blogs Gordon. At this point, we yeah. need to we need to get you hooked up with a, um, a video camera, and uh, you need to start vlogging and doing the, this. Is the vlogging. new medium. So if you do, if you start a vlog, I think uh, I think it'd be very interesting to watch. I I think a, so. A video log, a yes. vlog is what you yeah, yeah, I'm aware yeah. of those. Yeah. I've toyed with the idea, but that's a lot. I mean, getting video right is, you know, that that's well. We'll talk about that, it. I mean, I'm, as always, I don't think I'm that much anything. matters anymore. Well, yeah, I know a lot of vloggers who definitely don't get the video right, but they're still successful. <laughs> <laughs> so, I would love to talk to more. I would love to talk to you more about that. So, so Jake, can yeah. you pull up? Can you pull up a website and share it? Or you, the rest of the photos? I don't know that Gordon's going to see the rest of the photos. He won't May I ask you another answer. question? You got a question? Do you know Dean? Did you know uh, Dean prior to this? I did project? not know Dean. I met him. I went. I drove up, up to Matt's farm, and we had a, a real long conference call. And we did a read through, which was an incredibly powerful for me. I've never done that before. And I he read the part of the character that's got my name, and I read uh, the part of at the time it was Carl, was a male figure, mm -hmm. and I it was delightful to read with him. And I felt like I knew him when I saw him on set. I mean, we hugged. So I. So now I do think I, I feel like I know him. He's a friend, but never met him before this. Right. Yeah, I knew these two, those two guys would like each other. I, there was well, we no share doubt a in my mind. Story. Both of us had, both of us had preachers for father. Oh, really? Fathers, huh. and then have had a kind of an odyssey trying to make peace with certain um, aspects of a Christian spiritual tradition, kind of mm -hmm. coming out of that, and, and struggled more than our fathers did. So we, we share a, a real, I think Dean said, well, that's kind of feels like my story too. So. So did your father struggle with issues of faith and such, or do you know? No, there's a, there's a line in the, in the film where the, the guy turns his folder over to Carla, who's the kind of the, the dealer. She's evaluating it. And she says, she says, wow, your dad scored a 94. There's like a, this imaginary level of and at 94. It's a question of true believer. I mean, because yeah. there are true believers in the world. I mean, people who are just totally sold out and in whatever that view is. So that that character was clearly based on my father, who is that guy. And it's a great guy. Love him. Yeah. yeah. So tell people about um, the little side project that might come out of this this larger short story that you're excited about working on. All right, I'll, I'll try to do this in a reasonably reasonably fast. Now time. we can't make any promi we we can't make any promises on how this go ends, but we have a we have a goal. Is that right? Okay. Yes, okay. yes. So I, I I got started drinking whiskey pretty seriously maybe four years ago, and then I've even done some training at this uh, whiskey marketing school in Austin. I'm actually now a level one whiskey sommelier. My, my friends all give me a super hard time about that. Um, I did it on a lark, and because I'm actually I'm doing some whiskey writing right now. But we have created a, an imaginary whiskey called Diamondback. And we, got, we had a serious graphic designer do the label. And we had a set piece that was this Diamondback. And it says, uh, Diamondback whiskey, you know, Pete from Scotland, Venom from Texas. And at the bottom it says, because we like a whiskey that doesn't go down without a fight. So it was originally meant to just be a scary kind of whiskey that uh, would be this almost communion element for the, the Gordon Atkinson character. But now it's actually going to be a whiskey. I mean, I, I, I've worked with someone, and we've, we've got a, a blended whiskey that we've put together, and we're going to be giving away. And, and oh. uh, So it's, it's actually going to be a real whiskey called Diamondback, assuming we get copyrights and straightened out. I don't know, Copperhead, would that work, Matt, if we had to make a big shift? I think we – you did a su su simple search on the Internet. And yeah, I didn't, I didn't I, see I any. couldn't believe we didn't find anything. So you jumped out there and grabbed some domain names. Yeah, diamondbackwhiskey.net I got. So 
you can actually see the bottle that we use in the movie if you just go. That's all that's there right and now. And also whiskey spelled without an E. I mean, yeah. I got Diamondback whiskey with no E. That's the Scottish way of spelling whiskey. American whiskey is E-Y. Scottish is no E. So I have Diamondback whiskey with no E dot com. Yeah, either one of those should work. So anyway, that's going to be fun. Any, any of y'all whiskey drinkers? I know Matt's really not. No, I'm not. Not, not, not of any repute. No. If I get up there for one of these shows, I'll uh, I'll attempt to rectify that situation. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll walk go you through along it. With so you. I'm 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 an evangelist for whiskey right now. So <laughs> it's been a long there road you for you. So you didn't yeah, really change right. that much. Yes. You didn't really change that much in your career path. Correct? That's right. Yes. Exactly. Hey Jake, scroll up, man. Let me see the the full label down That's below. Nice. That looks there great. There you go. That's a thing now. It's going to be a thing sooner than later, we think. I think you can pull that off. Yeah, it just still blows my mind that that's, that wasn't already a name. It should be. Yeah, Copperhead is more problematic. <laughs> <laughs> but that's another story for another day. So, uh, Gordon, thanks for joining us, man. Okay. I, I, told, I was, told you I was going to get you out of here by one, so... We're, we're hitting right up against. Can I have that. one more question? Yeah, go for it, man. And, and uh, I thought both Dean and Carla. I thought I thought Carla did a great job. At, oh on yeah, the film. Denise, Denise, <laughs> Carla, Denise. Thank yeah. you. I'm mature. <laughs> I tell you this before. I thought you I, both performances were great, but I thought she actually was quite good. You want to hear something fun? I didn't. I, I think I told you this on the phone, but I didn't tell Will. Uh, a rough cut we watched, and my son-in-law, who had no background on this at all. He hadn't seen any of it. Oh, he can't. Didn't know any of the story, anything. He watched the rough cut with us the other night. Oh. He had no idea that, that uh, Salome and Carla were, were the, the same, same lady. Person? Really? He didn't know. He didn't, it didn't go. occur to him oh. that that was the same actor. Isn't that cool, man? Yeah. yeah. So any concerns we had about it just being too obvious that they were the same person kind of went out the door on that one. So it's very cool. Even if... You know, it's irrelevant. It, does, it doesn't really matter, but yeah, it still but. was It was something we didn't expect well, to happen. Because she did Gordon two different performances, basically. For me, you got it is true that the same actress playing the two different roles, that has symbolism within the story as well. Yes. You, yeah, don't, wanna, sure, you don't sure give too much away there, buddy, but you yeah. might want to kind of help people get that. So uh, she... The Gordon character, as he enters this new stage of an inner journey, which we all do in midlife, um, he encounters someone who sort of symbolizes the human unconscious and the human conscious side, the two sides of us, which comes into all of our journeys. So that, that was why the same, the same actor played both roles, because it's really two sides of his inner journey. There you go. Well mm -hmm. done. You didn't give too, too much away. Is that okay? No, no, that was good. The actor's good. statement, dog. There you go, man. The life journey. Hey, well, we did it. We said that we were going to try to get you on, and it actually happened. That's pretty good. Yeah, thanks. You know, I play, you know, I beat Matt in pool right in that ah, exact pool hall. You remember really? that, Matt? You beat him, huh? No, I don't remember that at all. Yeah, oh, he's claiming yeah, yeah. he doesn't I, remember I that. <laughs> Are you sure? One in a million <laughs> shot. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I love that place. That's like my place. I own that place now. That's mine. That's my, my pool hall. <laughs> I, I want to be here on Wednesday night when you come assert yourself as owning oh. this place. 